We are honoring the sun today and the stability and light that the sun brings to all of us. And that means I've got my yellow, my bright, vibrant yellow on. And my hope is that we will energize. And yet at the same time, the feeling of stability, which is more methodical slower paced. So it, it'll be more of a slow flow today, but still yet intense. So I want you to keep your, your life force, prana, breath strong as we move through practice today, but steady. So let that be more of like um, a slow, deep rhythm that you have underneath the surface of the whole practice today. So we'll begin sitting back on our heels or on a block. So Virasana or Vajrasana. So we'll do some cross-legged positions in a little bit. And as long as this feels comfortable enough for you, you can also you know, place a, a blanket or a pillow or something underneath your knees. And that could also help we want to get our spine tall. We want to get the shoulders to relax back. We want to find where our head can be level. And just rest your palms for now in your lap. You're going to rest your, let's do the left hand inside the right. Okay. And just begin to draw your eyes to close, but your gaze up to the brow area or middle of the forehead, third eye area. And allow yourself to sit in your seat. So really feel this grounding down, this settling, this connecting to the earth. So with exhales, we bathe the pelvic floor with our breath. And when we inhale, we bathe the crown. So lengthen that breath all the way to the top of your head and imagine you're letting the light in through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, bring that light all the way down to the base of your pelvis, to the tops of your feet that rest on the earth, to the sitting bones you feel underneath. So keep drinking in the breath like that, soaking up energy and light from both the earth and the heavens, settling into this moment, this sacred time, this sacred space, this ritual of practice that's become our Sundays, and settle in to yourself and to this moment. Continuing to visualize the golden light, stretching to reach it at the crown of your head with your inhalation, bringing that light down through the central channel of your spine, just visualizing a golden fountain or a golden waterfall down the spine, down into the earth under your seat throughout your whole body. Noticing the rise and fall of the breath coming through, not just the front of the body, but the back of the body as it glides up the spine. Feel the expansion of the side body on your inhalation, a movement laterally from the center towards the outer edges of your ribs, hips, feet, ears. And breathe from the inner as well as the outer. So feel yourself as you inhale, inhale from the navel center, radiating out in all directions like the sun or the beams of light. And exhale, draw that energy of light back to the navel. So it's like you're a glowing ball sitting here, visualizing this energy with your breath. 
And now we're gonna charge ourselves even more. So you're gonna take your uh, index fingers together and your thumb pads together to form a downward facing triangle. And then the other fingers are just gonna fold in. So I'm full, you can even make a soft fist, take the thumbs together and take the index fingers together. And it's a downward facing triangle. And you can just kind of let your hands rest. You can even make it sort of, instead of a triangle shape, you can make it into more of a diamond shape if you'd like. So you're gonna hold that right around your navel center with your index fingers pointing down and your thumbs either facing in towards each other at the center of your navel or slightly raised up. Now continue that, charging your energy, charging yourself. So you're really pulling in this deeper charge of prana into your system for repair and rejuvenation. So you're kind of signaling to all the subtle energies of your body that it's time to sort of feel this plug in of energy and the electricity that moves from there into your hands and fingers into your belly and just absorb, soak in the prana, soak in the light. We're letting those reservoirs be filled now. Reservoirs inside the body, carrying and holding our energy. We're letting them be filled with our light and with the light all around us. Your lungs, your heart are energized. Feel the lungs light up, feel the heart and the circulatory system light up. You're just doing that on visualization with your breath. Stay with it for another couple minutes. You can also imagine now your intestines, large and small, also being activated by this light lubricating and absorbing, bringing light through the whole entire digestive tract. Greater metabolism, greater absorption of nutrients. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Now see all your nerves, all the strands of nerves that move through your whole entire body. Just imagine them as little tendrils, large and small, that go through every little edge of your body. And imagine now all your nerves lighting up, feeling that refreshment of light through all your nerves, light flowing. And on your next breath, inhale, come up onto your knees, still holding your mudra. Let your tailbone tuck slightly down so you feel the tailbone moving down towards the backs of your knees. You're balancing on the tops of your feet, almost like you're in mountain pose here on your knees. Feel the crown, feel the legs, feel the extension of your tailbone through the, the knees and through the tops of the feet, grounding you to the earth, stabilizing your energy, bringing you to earth, feeling the sense of gravity at feeling the sense of the heavens above. And on your next exhale, release your hands. You can shake them out and come to standing at the front of your mat. Okay, so stand in mountain pose from here. We'll take um, Atamanjali. So the palms of the hands come together at the heart center. Anjali Mudra or Atmanjali Mudra. You're going to have your feet about hips distance or slightly in. You're going to press the palms together on purpose. You're going to feel the pads of your fingers. 
and the heels of your hands, the outer and inner, like the thumb pads and the baby finger pads connect. You'll feel the arches of the hands slightly lifted, but you feel this connection, the right coming into the left. Letting your shoulders relax down your back so your shoulder blades soften, your front ribs slightly pin in, your belly draws in with each exhale. Feel the strength like two pillars of your legs. And then the central channel of your spine, like the third pillar coming up from the two. And then feel that connection to heavens and light and crown and earth below, ground below through the feet. Okay, from that stability, we're gonna inhale, come up off the heels and onto the tippy toes, holding that stability and strength. So feel that lift, feel that connection. Note how you have to press your hands together, connect into your midline to hold yourself steady on your tippy toes. As you exhale, try to stay on your tippy toes as you bend your knees and lower down as much as you can. Good, and then on your inhale, stay here. Exhale here. And then inhale again. See if you can come up higher this time on your tippy toes, balancing for that stability, that inner line, that plumb line of energy, pressing and connecting, drawing into the navel, drawing into the inner line of the legs, feeling those feet strong and connected, rooting down. Exhale, bend the knees. Knees are tracking forward with the thighs parallel. And you can come down as deep, or as narrow as you want, but try to keep your heels up. Good, if they have to come down, it's okay. Last one, inhale, press up. Keep the hands pressing at the heart. Keep the tailbone and sitting bones moving towards the midline of the body. Feel your length, feel your strength. Feel the top of your shoulders relax, neck long. Stay with it, one more breath, inhale. Exhale, oh, try to keep your heels up. One last time, bend the knees. If you have to get your heels down, do stay. Just stay and pause. You're gonna feel some shaking. You're gonna feel some energy in your own legs. Stay with the breath, stable, deep, long, slow breaths. You got one more left. Press the palms together, feel that connection. And then slowly as you inhale, come back to mountain, dropping your heels to the earth. Take a big, long inhale and exhale. <sighs> Exhale out through your mouth. Good. Do that again two more times. Hands at the heart center, feeling this prayerfulness, feeling this gratitude, feeling this connection to light, to your inner Atman, your divine self, your soul self. Good. And then release. So your right hand is now going to turn out at about heart or shoulder level. Your left hand is going to turn out, but down. So your right fingertips point up and your palm is facing out. Your left palm faces down, fingertips towards the earth, but palm facing out about hip level. Okay. So this particular mudra is called a baya, the one with your right hand out. And your left hand is called varada. And this is a, a mudra of stability and protection. So while we do this next set of poses, we got 10 breaths in each. You're gonna stand with your left leg behind your right. Let me stand back a little more. So your left leg behind your right. Okay, and you're just gonna hook your left toes behind your right ankle or calf. Okay, and you're gonna hold this for 10 breaths. And as you hold your breathing, feeling this sense of traction through your spine. So you don't particularly have to press hard through your feet. You're just connecting to the stability of your right leg. Your right knee can stay slightly bent. You're feeling like you're creating a shield of strength and protection around you. You're energizing your auric field your sort of bubble, energy bubble that surrounds you. You're strengthening that so it can feed and nourish you through life. 
And two more breaths here, deep, long, and slow. Staying with a patient, soft gaze out in front of you, soft mouth, soft face, soft jaw, soft inner belly even. Feel the breath come in through your heart center. Exhale, release just your legs. Stay with the hand position. Actually, you know what? I think we might change hand positions. Nope, we keep with the hand position. <laughs> Let's do left hands um, or left foot on the ground, right foot behind. Again, it's like no big deal. We're just taking that right foot and we're hooking around. And I say no big deal, but if your balance feels off today, this is helping to get us into our balance, get us into our sense of connection, root to sky, peak to valley, so get a sense of that you're balancing yourself through this full body mudra. And you're letting yourself be at peace with the shaking. You're letting yourself be at peace with whatever rises in your body that's teaching you right now. Whatever rises in your mind that's giving you insights right now. And just imagine as you breathe, see the shield behind you as well as in front of you to all sides above and below. So it's almost like you're creating a little spaceship <laughs> of energy, a vortex of golden light, almost like a golden egg that surrounds you. One more big breath in and out. Letting that standing leg work, even with the knee soft and bent. Good, inhale, stand tall, relax your arms by your sides and shake everything out. All right, well done everyone. We'll step, if you haven't yet done so, let's step to the front of our mats. We'll begin in mountain pose at the front of our mat. We'll go through several rounds of sun salutations. Um, the idea here today is to make sure that we sort of um, connect to the different stances like forward stance position, side stance position, wide stance position. So we'll go through several different variations on the sun salutation together. Um, I'm gonna teach like four or five rounds and then I'm gonna allow you to go on your own four or five rounds and I'm gonna put on the Gayatri mantra. So you're welcome to at that point to kind of move at your own pace and do your own variations for, it's gonna be about a, 10 minute period of time, okay? So let's begin now together. Feet hips distance apart, standing in mountain pose, leveling your head. You can turn, you can just stand in samastitihi, so turning the palms out for now and just feeling like you are here. You are breathing and you are not just alive, but you are vibrant. You have vitality. You're lit up with the energy of light and the sun. And let this rhythmic breath guide you. Let's begin our ujjayi pranayam. Letting the throat be slightly constricted. Let a whispery sound come through the back of the throat. Letting the tongue gently rest on the roof of the mouth. The jaw relax, the lips soft. Breathing in and out through the nose. But anytime you get overheated, I welcome you to open your mouth and exhale the breath to release some of that extra heat. Let's start with an exhale to bring the palms together at heart center again. Inhale, offer your heart open as a prayer ritual to the sky, to the sun, reach up, palms come together. Look at your thumbs. Exhale, take the arms wide. Take the hips back as you swan dive. If you need to bend your knees, let them bend. But bring your hands to the floor next to your feet. If it's just your fingertips, that's fine. If you can't reach, grab your ankles and then just pull yourself in, letting your knees bend as needed and hanging the crown of your head towards the tops of your feet. From Uttanasana here, kind of lengthen your belly over your thighs. 
Lengthen, lengthen your chest over your knees and shins. Feel that elongation as you bend in half. Take another breath here. Again, feeling the stability of both feet on the ground, kind of your inner groins hugging, your pelvic floor hugging in. Fingertips to the ground. Right leg goes back. We'll start with low lunge. So right knee to the floor. Start to peel your left chest, left belly away from the left thigh. And if you can, you can even come up into kind of a sinking down hip drop in this pose. And I welcome you to take the arms up by the ears. Again, squeeze the inner arms, inner legs towards the midline without tensing the shoulders, without tensing the hips. So feel that aliveness through the midline. If reaching the arms is too much for right now, you can have your hands at your, your thigh, or you can bring your fingers back down to the earth. So let's take two or three more breaths here in cycles. So feeling the pressure down through the forward foot, the pressure down and sinking through the hips, but the connection to that back foot heel, you can have the toe curled under or flat. And now exhale, open the arms out wide, take the fingertips back to the floor, frame that forward foot, curl the right toes under, lift off the right knee, Plant the hands to plank. And when you get to plank, squeeze the ankle bones towards each other, but still leave space. So it's like you're drawing those inner groins of that inner line of your thighs here. And then connect where your pubic bone is and align your pubic bone to your nose. And let your back of your neck, back of your head float. Broaden the shoulders, kind of spreading to the outer edges of your hands. Pinkies, open heart, exhale, lower down. Knees, chest between the thumbs. That means you're gonna tip your head forward. Let your heart lead the way. Your hips stay off the ground. Chin to the earth. So stay here. Holding Ashtanga Panam. Holding this little inchworm shape. Breathing. With each exhale, kind of hug that inner line of your belly. Spread your tail. Feel your toes curled under. Feel your elbows draw in. Inhale, sweep open, tops of the feet connect. Low, little cobra. So low little cobra means hands might be even slightly off the ground. Tops of the feet are connected. Toes are spread, belly draws in, shoulders draw down. You can even tuck your chin slightly, letting the back of the neck be long. Take a big breath here, in and out. When you exhale, pull that navel in nice and tight. Plant the hands, press up a little higher. Cobra pose. More stretchy, back bendy version, elbows in nice and tight, elbows bent. Again, you're pulling up out of your lower body. So we're not feeling the compression in the low back so much as we're feeling the lengthening of the front of the body. Good, exhale, curl your toes under, straighten the arms, press back to downward facing dog. Five full complete breaths here. See if you can hold down dog for this first one in stillness. So wherever you naturally come, just stay. Let it come alive here. So without changing any positioning of the hands and feet, let your breath help your down dog come alive. Hang your head, shake your head no, shake your head yes. Broaden across the tops of your shoulders so the base of your neck is broad and wide. And then open strongly through your armpits like you're spreading your wings. One more deep breath here. Press all the energy from the floor. Let it meet at your tailbone and sitting bones. Good. On your next inhale, 
Look between your thumbs, right foot comes through right thumb side, left knee comes down. And if you have to adjust so you're back at that same kind of position, just opposite leg, feel free to adjust your feet and legs. So you got equality for both sides. Okay, keep those left toes turned down, right foot planting. Sink the hips if you want. Let the, feet, the fingers start to float away. Pull into your front body. So you got this continued stabilizing force. Deep breaths. Maybe the arms extend up by the ears. Maybe the hands stay clasped over the thighs. So feel what your body needs today. So if you're really feeling energetic, really want to work a little bit more, power, strength, and length, as you shine, also relax. So let your inhales be about reaching and spreading and expanding and opening. Let your exhales be about dropping, sinking, and relaxing. So you have that balance between effort and relaxation, even in these dynamic poses. Exhale, bring the fingertips down to the ground. Step your feet together at the front of your mat. Of course, heels are still slightly apart. Fold in again, Uttanasana, and see if you can really bring your forehead towards your shins. Bring your tailbone up behind you. Grow length through your legs, from ankle bones to tailbone. Grow the crown towards the tops of the feet. Inhale and exhale here. On your next inhale, Peel the head up, come half lift, and then let your arms float up. Reach the arms out and overhead. See the palms come together. Thumbs connect. Exhale, circle your arms back to your heart. So you're creating this big wave, like a circle of the sun. Let's do it again. Inhale, open the palms from the heart, reach up, new variation. Exhale, fold in half. Big, wide, open circles with the arms. This time, bring the left leg back. We'll come into high lunge. So this is also known as runner's lunge. It's like you're getting ready to run a race. Okay, so feel the center line and center point, right? It's directly under your pubis. So you want to balance your weight from the forward foot to the back foot. Energy there, both. And they're kind of moving in opposite directions from the center to the periphery. So from here, you can start to pick your heart up. You can even begin to lift your belly away from your right thigh, okay? So some of you may stay down. Some of you may just come here with the arms resting, really working on those legs. And others of you are taking the crescent warrior position. So just see where your body leads you to today. If your energy is low, you're gonna stay low. If your energy's high or you want to work it higher, you're bringing it higher. Let your shoulders drop down. Let your heart pick up. Feel those front ribs kind of pin into your body so you feel your belly turn on. Tailbone and sitting bones turn on. Good. You can even pull slightly up on your pelvic floor. Next big breath in. Exhale, big circle back to the floor. Frame the forward foot. Step back, plank. Again, squeeze those inner groins together. It's as if you have something between your thighs, you're drawing in. But at the same time, broaden your chest and heart space. Palms are spread, fingers pressing, so you're pushing the earth so you pull away from it. Good. On your next exhale, drop to knees, chest between the thumbs. So I know you want to look there, but keep your head up as you do. Chin to the earth. Elbows in. Inhale to the belly. Tops of the feet press. Hands press. Big cobra, but still keep your pubic bone on the ground. So if you have to kind of look over your right shoulder and then look over your left shoulder and kind of rock your hips a little bit. This kind of helps you feel that connection to your pubic bone. So pubic bone, pelvis pushing down. Hands pressing down, but pulling in at the same time. And then you're elongating front body by pulling into the belly, working the elbows in, the triceps. When your elbows are bent, those triceps turn on. That's the back of your arms. So feel that happening. 
Feel the pelvic floor now lift. So a little Ashwini Mudra. We're pulling in through the perineum. Good. Forehead raises up to the sky. You can gaze up to the sky. Exhale, downward facing dog. So I always move kind of through table and then to down dog. So that's really a nourishing way to transition. You can transition straight to down dog, but you have to kind of pull into your belly for support. This time in down dog, you can bend one knee and press the opposite leg straighter, heel deeper, and then switch to the other side. Bend the opposite knee, press the heel of the opposite leg deeper. And then work on keeping the feet steady, heels slightly lifted, and just sway the hips like you're wagging your tail from side to side. Nothing in the upper body is moving. You're just getting that movement through the lumbar spine. Good, and then walk your feet in a little closer, bend your knees, and kind of round into your back. As you round into your back, you're pressing your hands into the floor, and now tip back stretching the spine straight while keeping your heels up. Good, so inhale, kind of round. Bring your shoulders more over your wrists, tucking and rounding. Exhale, press the hips back, keep the heels up. Do that one more time. Inhale, round, tuck tail under. Exhale, press back, fanning out the backside. Good. Walk the feet back to your normal down dog. Give it one more breath. One full inhale and exhale. See how your down dog's taking shape. It's like the puzzle piece is coming together. And now with your next breath in, we're taking our left foot forward to the left thumb side. It might need help getting there. Back leg stays straight. We're balancing our weight, forward foot to back foot. Keep that back leg nice and straight. It's actually you're pushing the back of your knee towards the sky. Stay here if you'd like, sink the hips. Or to make it more dynamic, push into both feet. Float the trunk up, float the hands up. Take the shoulders, roll them back. First position with just crescent legs, arms relaxed. And if the next pose unfolds for you, sweep those arms up by the ears, stretching back through the right heel. Bright and shiny, glittery hands. Eyeballs, heart, be belly, and pelvic floor. Everything alight. Breathing in, breathing out. Pulsing with the radiant sun. Squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Kind of roll in through the right hip so you feel the stabilizing force through your inner thighs. Big circle down, hands to the floor. Step the feet together, front of your mat, deep Uttanasana. If you have to, bend your knees first. Let your belly rest on your thighs. Let your head hang down. Shake the head no, shake the head yes, so you know that neck is relaxed. And then begin to straighten the legs from here, forehead pulling into the shins. Hands and fingers can kind of walk back. This time, if you want, walk your fingers back behind you, behind your heels, and let yourself come in even deeper. Crown to the tops of the feet. Holding and breathing. Relaxing the face muscles, coming back to your ujjayi. Soften the knees, hands come back to either side of your hands, fingertips facing forward. Inhale, sweep the arms out and overhead, reach up, look at your thumbs. Exhale, circle, big one, back to the heart center. Third round, <laughs> inhale, open the palms from the heart, reach up. Building that endurance, right, the deeper strength and vitality. Exhale, fold in half. Good, this time, option, let's inhale, half lift. So fingertips at the floor or up the shins, just depending on what your flexibility feels like. But let's all lift the kneecaps wherever we are. 
Align the hips over the ankles. And when you lengthen your chest forward, try to drop your chin. I have the habit too of picking up through the back of my head. But try to get long crown forward, tailbone back. And then start to engage Uddiyana Bandha. So you're kind of pulling back and in through the belly on your exhale. Good, activate all three bandhas now. Chin towards the chest. Tailbone pulls in, pelvic floor lifts, Uddiyana Bandha turn on, exhale all your breath out, pull into your Uttanasana, good, inhale, stretch the right leg back, then the left, come to plank, so we're skipping now those lunges, lower down, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, and you can do a half chaturanga, right, just Keep your body in plank and bend your elbows. And now come to the tops of the feet and either cobra or up dog, depending on what your back is saying yes to. We're just here for three breaths. Push into the pads of your fingers. Let your sitting bones drop in, but towards the midline. Good. And on your next breath, downward facing dog. So you can lift from the belly, pushing the floor and untuck the toes. Or you can find your way safely for your back in that transition. Five deep breaths here. Just being still and quiet. And when I say deep breaths, I want you to expand your lungs completely. Feel the back of your ribs move with your breath. On your way forward, we're going to bend our knees and look between the thumbs and get some spring in your ankles and feet because we're going to spring off those tiptoes, okay? And we're going to spring forward so our feet land between our thumbs. We've got to keep our gaze there because that's where we want our feet to land. And inhale, just pop right up into half lift, chin in, kneecaps lifting, pelvic floor on, Uddiyana Bandha turn on. Good, exhale, fold in half. Good, inhale, reach up, stretch up, circle up, look at the thumbs as they come together. Exhale, circle. Okay, this is our last one together and then you're gonna have some on your own. So inhale, open your heart, give thanks for this beautiful practice of energizing opening. Exhale. Fold in half, give thanks for connecting to the stability of the earth. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, this is your chance. If you'd like, you can jump back through chaturanga. So elbows bent, plank. Inhale to the tops of the feet, up dog. Some of you at cobra, then back to downward facing dog. From here, some forward stance positions. Right leg sweeps up and back behind you, but straight up and back, don't tip the hips yet. Take the right knee and touch it to your nose, bringing your shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, send it back again. Stretch back towards down dog on the left leg. In and exhale, pull and round, squeeze, curl, shoulders over the wrists. Inhale, stretch it back. One more. Exhale, round and curl. Inhale, stretch up and back. And now right foot comes right between the thumbs, kind of towards the right thumb side. This time back foot plants. Warrior one. So our traditional Virabhadrasana one. We all got ready for this one today. So you got five Ujjayi breaths here. Swing the arms back, bring your chest in front, warrior three. So you're gonna push off that back foot, create a T with your body like you're taking off on a flight. Some of you can extend the arms overhead. Even clasp the hands and come into steeple mudra here. Got about three more breaths. 
Vera three, balancing on the right leg. T-shape in the body, back leg is strong. Standing leg may be shaky, it's okay. Take your wings back, arms back. And now bend up forward knee, come right back into the warrior two stance. Reach the arms up. Exhale, open the palm, um, open the arms out, palms to the floor. Step back again to plank, lower down. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Deep breath in and out. Filling your lungs, inhale. Exhale, emptying your lungs. One more like that. Final side, left leg up to the sky to reach. Your right heel stays connected. Your left foot is buoyant. Exhale, round your back, nose to knee, shoulders over the, um, over the wrist. Inhale, send it up and back. Left leg to the sky. Exhale, round and tuck, squeeze that thigh into your belly. Inhale, reach. Exhale, round. Inhale, reach. Exhale, plant that left foot, left thumb side, front of your mat, right foot at the angle. Warrior one. Virabhadrasana. Shoulders resting. Arms reaching. Connection to that midline. Forward stance position. Feel that stability in your legs. Come forward, send the arms back. Five breaths. So we're standing, balancing here on left leg, right leg reaching and lifting behind us, fear of Adrasana three, hands can come in front, interlock, index fingers up. Exhale, step back, Warrior Virabhadrasana, five breaths. Final vinyasa with the group. Open the arms out wide. Plant the hands. Come to plank. Lower down, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hot. You may rest in child's pose here for five breaths or hold down dog and rest for five breaths. Just feel the prana circulating. Feel the energy of the heart. The heart pumping. Feel the energy of your breath, your Respiratory system is opened up. Things are flowing. Energy is moving. When you're ready, coming back to down dog, we'll finish this round. Look between the thumbs, bend the knees, get that spring. You're kind of leaning forward and back as you get ready to jump. Inhale to flat back. Exhale to standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweep the arms out and overhead. Reach up, look at the thumbs as they come together. Exhale, big circle around. Palms together at heart center, pause. So there's lots of standing poses, lots of variations on the sun salutation. We have not yet done. So this is your chance to keep going and do four more rounds on your own. I'm sorry, five more rounds because we're doing a total of nine. So let's free flow. Allow yourself to move at your own pace and to do whatever poses are most suitable for you in this moment. And I'll be putting on the Gaia tree. I actually, I say five rounds, but some of you may have more, some of you less. 
You're looking for those poses that your body is craving now. We have a lot of seated poses coming up soon. So try to stick with standing, balancing, dynamic poses. Warriors, arm balancing, even if you feel like going to a wall and practicing some inversions. Okay, here comes the Gayatri.
So your last minute, just finishing up your flow. We'll all meet together in mountain pose, pausing there for a soft meditation again with Uttara Bodhi Mudra. So remember, we did this with the thumbs and index fingers connected. Thumbs connected, index fingers turned down at the belly. Standing there with that first mudra we practiced. When we were sitting earlier. We're just coming back full circle to this regenerative power. The power to regenerate our energy with the light of the sun, with the light that is within, the light that moves through all things at all times. And we embrace the power of this mudra as it charges our inner power reservoirs. So these deeper places where energy is stored in the body, and we direct the prana that we've been circulating through these dynamic poses right there, right to our navel center, powering up energy reserves. And you can imagine now that you're sending that power to the adrenal glands, which sit kind of up near the back of your ribs, near the spine, just above the kidneys. As you electrically charge that reservoir, you're also charging the reservoir of waters that are in the kidneys. Right now, go ahead and imagine your exhale to release any excess heat from the body with an exhalation out through the mouth. And with your next inhale, imagine beautiful blue cooling light moving into the kidneys, into adrenal glands. And just a few more rounds of breath. Beautiful. You can release your ujjayi pranayama. If you've been breathing ujjayi still, you can let that go. Feeling thanksgiving, that gratitude in your heart for all the blessings in your life today. And let's slowly make our way to cross leg sitting position, facing me, if you'd like, facing your computer. If you have some water, grab it. If you need to use the, the bathroom, please do. Okay, 
So I'm just taking a regular cross leg position with one foot in front of the other. Okay, so let me just tip this. Okay, easy seat. Okay, now we're going to be changing the legs often in this next set of poses. So just know we're not going to be here the whole entire time. All right, not in this particular. Okay, so we're going to start with um, uh, yoga mudra. So this is a mudra where we clasp our hands, our arms behind our back and squeeze the shoulder blades together to kiss each other. I love how warm everybody looks right now, all bright and <laughs> you all got your color back. <laughs> Good, lifting your heart, lifting your chest, beautiful. So we're gonna take an inhale here and let the heart just kind of expand. If that means we're gonna pull the chin slightly in and raise the gaze up. Exhale, we're gonna come forward, taking the arms to the sky and the forehead down towards the ground. And then inhale, come back up, lift the heart, pull the chin slightly in, good as you gaze up. Exhale, forehead to the ground. So we're just coming forward and back, inhaling and exhaling. That's three, we're gonna do 10. And you can just kind of close your eyes and take over. So what happens as we move is we're allowing the heart and all the energy we brought to the belly start to move up into the arms and the heart, which are our relationship and self-love center, compassion centers. You might get some tingly in your arms. That's pretty normal. You can always cross your hands in the opposite way about halfway through if you'd like. Some of you, us are on air seven or eight. Hopefully you're counting. Inhale as you come up, last one. Exhale as you come down. And then release the arms, shake it out. All right, so not only does that bring all this energy and vibrancy to the arms, you're also feeling the roots again against the earth. All right. Twisting time. So let's take our left hand over to our right knee. Oh, hold on. We're going too fast. Erica needs to slow down. Switch the legs. We got to do this on the other side with the other foot forward. Okay, Yogi Mudra. So if you clasp your hands always the same way, then clasp them so the thumbs, other thumb is on the inside. Okay, so behind you. We're doing this again. <laughs> just with the leg switch. So now you're, you had your left foot in front, now your right foot's in front. All right, amen, let's inhale, lift to the heart. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale. Exhale. Keep going. Feel the sitting bones and the tailbone. Put your attention there now. So arms are moving with your fold. Flexion and extension of the spine. All right, I'm going to 10 now. I hope you've been counting. Exhale, 10. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Shake out the shoulders. Shake out the arms and hands. Shake out the neck a little bit. Okay, so this next twist, let's just stay with this leg forward. Left hand to the right knee, right arm behind you. So just easy twist to begin. So we're just getting our arms in position. Okay, good. Now take a big long breath in and lengthen from your sitting bones to your crown before you even begin twisting. Your arms are just in position. Yeah, there you go. And now exhale, keep your sitting bones planted. Start to twist first through your waistline, then through your rib cage, then through your chest and shoulders, and then finally through your head and neck. Good, we got 10 breaths here. It's gonna feel like a long hold. Try to circulate your breath from the crown, down your back, up the front of the body, exhaling down the back of the body. So it's like you're following the line of the central channel of your spine, 
Wrapping around your pubis up all the way across the face to the crown. Exhale down the back of the body. Inhale up the front of the body. Exhale down the back of the body. Feeling that movement through the central channel as well in a spirally motion. As you're twisting, you feel this ringing out, this twisting. All those inner organs, digestive system, getting a massage. If you want to go a little further on this last exhale, give it a go. And then release and pause at center. Take a breath in and out. Notice the difference from the right to the left sides. And then let's cross the legs. So the other legs on top now, opposite foot in front. Right hand, left knee, left arm behind. So again, we're not even twisting it. We're just getting our arms in position. So I'm gonna keep kind of my chin over my right uh, chest point. Okay, and I'm gonna really work first that length in my spine. So elongation before extension, right? Elongate. So push those sitting bones, plug them down into the earth. Get into the circuitry of the earth, like breathe down so you feel those plugs go deep. And then inhale that electricity from the earth up through the spine, up to the crown, all the way up. And then take that on your exhale and now begin the twist. Waistline, rib cage, chest and shoulders. Ooh, and then the head and neck last, but the head just moves chin over the left, left chest points. Maybe eyes gaze further. Just for now, staying here, keeping that length, belly's drawn in, legs are steady like they're underground, and the spine rotates and spirals up from there. Drinking in your breath. Feel the pulse of the breath, the expansion and contraction of lungs so filling 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 on inhale squeezing 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 out the breath on exhale emptying emptying so play with that filling and emptying fully and completely And on your next exhalation, don't rush it. Take a nice long breath in. As you exhale, let the exhale, as you deflate, unwind your body back to center and pause. Close your eyes. So oftentimes, you know, as we get to this point, the body reveals the spots that are maybe locked up a little bit where the prana is not quite flowing, where there might be pain. And I want you to delegate your mind's energy, your concentrative forces. So your dharana, one pointed focus to the area that needs the prana in your body most right now. So this is a meditation just for about a minute and a half. With your eyes closed, you're sending your prana of life energy to that area that needs it the most. You're visualizing your prana going there. Prana is breath and attention. The force of light and vitality and energy that heals. It's your healing balm. Soft eyes, soft mouth, soft throat. It's an effortless awareness to what needs healing right now, directing the prana with the mind. Full intention, self-healing, self-love, self-rejuvenation, regeneration, transformation. 
we become the alchemist. We're removing whatever shit is in there and turning it to gold, weaving our healing prana to those areas that need it the most. It's like you're an energy weaver. Okay, take three more long, slow, deep breaths, three-part yogic breaths. So actually feel your whole body get extremely expanded with the inhale. Like everything lifts and picks up. And with the exhale, feel everything condense and squeeze, push it out, even breathe out through the mouth, like pursed lips, push it out, push it out, push it out. Any toxins, anything you wanna let go of, like inhale. Good, exhale, push it out. All of it, all of it. Inhale, fill it up. Fill it up more, sip it in all the way as much as you can, fill up those lungs. Exhale, push it out. All of it out, hold it out. And soften, let your eyes blink open. Good work. If you need to shake it out or do whatever you need to do, feel free. Switch the crossing of your legs again. If you want half lotus, so that just means put one foot on top and the other foot on the bottom. So this is a half lotus position with the legs. So one foot's on top, one's underneath. We're just gonna be here for a little bit. Okay, so hands to either side of you. Good fingertips on the floor. Good sit tall. Let the shoulders relax, let the heart lift. Good, I'm just watching you guys. <laughs> All right, so from here, take the right arm, reach it up, inhale. Exhale, arc over. So side body, inhale, come up, exhale, other side. Stay with the breathing, inhale, exhale, switch the arms, get it all out. Inhale, exhale. So don't rush it, we're on three, we're gonna do 10 at your own pace. If you can slow mo it, so you're breathing. So we actually take a long time doing these 10 to, I think I'm on four now. So we have so many more left to do. See how these side bends take shape and adapt and go deeper and help you feel more as you move through them. Keeping your sitting bones on the ground, you might find that those pauses at the top of your inhale get longer. And the pauses at the end of your exhales get longer. So I'm getting close to my last round. And so we'll switch when we come back up to center. We'll be switching our legs after we finish arching over to the right, left arm overhead. Inhale and exhale here. Some of you are still going, that's fine. We're gonna switch the legs out. So now the other leg is, or other foot's on top, half lotus. And if half lotus doesn't work for you, whatever you had in your legs, you're just bringing the other leg on top. So switching them out. Same thing, except this time we're gonna start by reaching up through the left arm, right hand. So we start with fingertips on the floor, sitting up tall. <laughs> and then left arm comes up and then exhale. Good. 
Plug those sitting bones down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, arc over. Now we're going to the opposite side. That's one. Inhale. Feel the sitting bones stay connected. So we're just kind of moving from the waistline up. Everything else stays planted. Inhale. That's two. And we'll keep going. And close your eyes now and just get into a nice rhythm. Meditating on the movement for the side body. Letting the breath and the movements dance together in a flow. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just experience this thing that we're doing right here, right now. Naturally, my ujjayi breath started back up again. Might be the same for you. I was connecting to that pattern of prana that's guiding the force of energy and movement. Clearing and cleansing. I'm on my last one now. If you've been counting, you might be getting close. This time we'll be ending over to the left side, right arm overhead. Inhale, coming back up to center. Pausing, relaxing the shoulders back, and again, circulating your prana. Feeling very centered, very stable, very lit up in all directions, like you're a glowing ball. You might even feel a little dancing energies radiating out from you, springing brightening, glowing, glittering. Just meditate for another minute, just feeling that stillness. You may feel that inner pulse. The inner pulse connects us with the vibration of the earth, the vibration of space, the cosmic forces, and just our little place. It's, we're like a naughty on the great web of life. One little point of light and light. Okay. So transitioning into um, our last seated position, let's uh, change the crossing of the legs. Um, actually, no, we're going to do this in Janu Shasana. So Janu Shasana is head to knee pose. So I'm going to sit sideways to demo this one. Okay, let me just adjust this. So I always have my little cushion there just to help me remember to keep my sitting bones connected. Let's bring our right leg straight out in front, left foot up the inside of that leg. We're going to start with the legs straight 
Um, this is going to be first active and then passive. So we're going to do 10 breaths passive. I'm sorry, 10 breaths active and then 10 breaths passive. So you're going to reach out. You're going to grab wherever you can comfortably reach, whether it's your just below your knee, your ankle, your foot. Okay, grab where you can comfortably reach and just keep your spine up and elongated. So try to keep as straight of a spine as possible. So the tendency is for us to round. So just try to keep that pulling up and out through your heart. Okay, let the crown be an elongation of that. So you kind of draw your chin down. We're going to come up into tri bonda. So all your bondas are going to be activated. You're going to lift up into your pelvic floor, pull back into your belly, tuck the chin, and then hold this with 10 soft breaths. So you won't be able to do really big breaths here because we've got our bondas locked. So we're just keeping the prana just circulating softly inside of us so we can hold. You're welcome to hold your breath if you can here. You can do it safely. That's like a preferred method of doing this Maha Banda Mudra with our body. Feel that little vibration. You might feel like the floor is bouncing. Keep that back of your knee pressing down. Keep your sitting bones connected. Feel this kind of a locking action through all your parts. One more. And then as you release, you're gonna soften your body in the pose, bend your knee, and then kind of hug your head. So you're bending your knee as far as you need to to hug your head to your knee. I'm gonna bring mine out a little bit. Okay, so just rest now, 10 breaths passive. Good, inhale, lift up. Let's do the other side, stretch the left leg out straight, bring the right foot up the inside of the left leg. Okay, hinging from those hips, grab hold wherever you can comfortably reach. Inhale, long gate, the spine. Holding here, you can kind of pull up through the perineum, pelvic floor, squeezing all the mula bandha muscles up, Pulling the belly button back, tucking the chin towards the chest, Maha Bandha, Tri Bandha, all the main bandhas locked in. If you need a little sip of breath in between this time, feel free to hold your breath or just do little sips. Pressing the back of your leg down into the floor, back of your knee, legs strong, upper thighs. Turn on, belly drawing back, pelvic floor lifted. Soften your brow, soften your jaw. Even though everything's locked up, you don't have to be tense. You can be here and be soft, even with the effort. You might feel some rocking, you might feel some tingling, you might feel some movement, body sort of shimmering and shaking and doing whatever it needs to do to move whatever's left here. Exhale, release, soften, bend the knee, plant the foot if you want, bring the head to the knee, pass it. You can even let your back round a little here. You'll notice all the circulation of breath and energy as you release, sense and feel, take it all in, relax. So 
Notice your mind's tendency to want to check out. Do your best to really relax into this moment, just in this shape with your breath. There's always a beginning, a middle, and an end to all things. Let's connect that third eye point to our knee. Give it a little massage. Inviting our mind to be here and now, open to the greater things. Good. Slowly release. Inhale. Come all the way up. Just take your legs straight out in front. Give them a little wiggle. <sighs> so with all that forward bend, we are counterbalancing with some back bending. So come on to your back. Uh, we'll need, let's see. We're going to be bridging. So you're gonna lie on your back with your knees bent and your feet planted on the ground. Okay. And from here, we're gonna be um, coming into Ashwini Mudra again. So it's like your PC mu muscle, it's the muscle perineum. It's particularly focused, Ashwini Mudra or Ashwini um, Banda is about particularly focusing on that band of muscle between your anus and your reproductive organs, okay? So we're particularly focusing on that point, Ashwini Mudra, to lift and contract as we do the bridging, okay? So this is what it looks like. We're in our normal everyday bridge with the feet underneath the ankles. I'm sorry, the feet underneath the knees. So the ankles and the knees are in one line. Arms are gonna be by your side, active palms facing down. You're keeping that Ashwini Mudra, squeezing when you lift and relaxing when you lower. We're gonna do 10 pumps. You can imagine inhaling, squeezing, pulling up, exhaling, relaxing down. You don't have to come into a big bridge. It could just be more like an incline from the knees to the shoulders. Last couple. So we're squeezing up even more. Let the backside stay fairly loose. Squeeze to the inner groin. Squeeze to the midline. Squeeze the perineum, lifting up and relaxing down. Good. Pause here. Hug your knees into your chest. We're going to do 10 rocks forward and back. So you can swing your legs if you want, or you can keep them pulled in. So you're just kind of drawing a little swing through the legs, rocking the spine up and down. If this is too much on your spine or your neck, you can adapt this movement just doing slow rocks here. After you've done 10 rocks, you're gonna lay back down on your back. Coming into shoulder stance. And you may find that having that last rock helps you get into your shoulder stand best. For those of you who can't practice shoulder stand, feel free to practice legs up the wall pose. I'm holding my hips with my hands, staying below for now. This is called Salamba Sarvangasana, or supported shoulder stand. Legs are straight up, but there's a little bend in the hips. If you want to come up further, you can walk your hand up the back of the body, straightening the legs even more. We're going to be here for about a minute and a half to two minutes. So if at any time you feel like you need to come out of the pose, feel free. Let your breathing remain deep and slow.
The shoulder stand is known as the queen of all postures. It helps tone all the glands of the body. It's great for the metabolism, for the thyroid. It's also one of the only poses that places weight, weight bearing on the, particularly on the biceps, upper, upper arms. You can take the last minute here to play, widen your legs, bring the feet together. You can bicycle the legs up in the sky. So let yourself just be a kid again and explore some playfulness in this upside down shape. You can helicopter your legs. You can twist and open. You can bring your legs behind you and play with plow pose or karna padasana, ear pinning pose. You can stretch your arms overhead to grab your feet. Last 20 seconds or so, keeping that butt high in the air. Either way, with the legs up or back. Keeping the pelvis light. Kind of circulating some of those deeper pranas into the heart, into the back of the head and neck. We're letting all that energy drain, all that nectar of the divine, the Amrita, soak in to our upper centers and especially to our brain. And that's the point where we get to relax now. So I want you to let your body free flow in whatever ways naturally come to you. So right away I go right into twist without even hearing myself in my mind tell me to twist. My body just knows. If there's a pose that you'd like to do here as you prepare for Shavasana and transition into our final resting place, Pratyahara exercises, you have full creative reign. So use these next few minutes just to honor what your body needs and wants. without placing any rules or restrictions on your movement. We'll eventually meet each other in Shavasana, but I would like you to take at least five minutes to free flow. Uh, maybe rehydrate, maybe use the toilet, maybe get whatever props you like for a really good deep Shavasana today. We have one more mudra to practice in the first few minutes of Shavasana. I'm just gonna make a, a little transitional music here while you're free flowing. Enjoy this time. Sua 
Okay, so winding down in the next minute, preparing your space for Shavasana. That means just turning off and kind of retreating from any external activities. So if there's anything that's going to disrupt Shavasana today, you're going to do what you can to create space for those disruptions to be minimal. Comfort, maximal. Before you get settled, we have one more mudra. It's called the Shakti Mudra. It's um, It really is a mudra to intensify stillness and harmony and peace. And so we'll make soft fists around our thumbs. So soft fists around the thumbs. And you can do this lying down or sitting up wherever you are. And then you're going to take your pinky and ring fingers together. Okay, so I'm just holding my thumbs inside my curled fingers, which are now on the inside. And I got my pinkies and ring fingers on either hand touching each other. Okay, so Shakti Mudra. Now you can bring this, if you lay down and you want to practice this mudra, we practice it for about two to three minutes. So if you want to lay down and, and start your Shavasana with a mudra here, please feel free. And now that you know the mudra, if you need to kind of get settled more, feel free and then come back. Remember the thumbs are underneath, ring and pinky fingertips touch. So get yourself saddled. Relaxing deeply. Long, slow exhale. So the inhale is not as important in this particular mudra as the exhale. So you're holding the mudra wherever you're at, sitting or laying down. You can hold it low or high, wherever it naturally is wanting to be for you today. Focus the breath down into your pelvic region, into the bowl of your pelvis, your hara line, your shakti. So from hip to hip, for the ladies, it's your womb space. You're actually directing your exhalations and your inhalations into the bowl of your pelvis. Relaxing the intestines. This has a really calming effect on your digestive system. It helps to relieve spasms in the lower ab abdomen. So it's great if you experience menstrual cramps. You can practice this mudra 
It's really beautiful and harmonizing for all the second chakra energies, lower reproductive and digestive. And also incidentally with our breath, focusing on long exhales that helps to intensify a deep respiratory influence. So it's really creating lots of prana and life to circulate through your cells. Clearing any disruptive energy in your respiratory system or circulatory system. And if you'd like to use our final affirmation now today, silence, harmony, and peace fill my entire bit being. Silence, harmony, and peace fill my entire being. Silence. Harmony and peace fill my entire being. At any time now, you can feel free to transition. You can rest on your back in the next minute or so. Or you can stay here as long as it feels right. Next minute or so, you're welcome to release your mudra. Begin to withdraw your senses and your, turn all your energies inward. Practicing true pratyahara, sense withdrawal. You may have something to place over your eyes or over your body. And today we'll be practicing our Shavasana in silence. Of course, there's never a complete silence. There's always sounds around us, either in our house or space or outside. And you let that be what you feel expands you. and releases you at the same time. Withdrawal of your senses is opening your inner ears, your inner eyes, and sort of closing off the sense organ of your eyes, closing off the sense organ of your ears. There's no longer awareness of the textures. You sort of turn off the sensual body, touch, taste, and smell. And you fully allow yourself to withdraw all your energies from the outer world and turn them, all the power in, resting, releasing, and receiving peace, harmony, silence.
So just becoming aware of the layers of rest that are available that you've experienced. or are experiencing now. The way the ears move out and then in. The way your feeling body feels out and then feels in. Notice even the way your eyes, the way they rest and the layers of letting go inside the eyes and behind the eyes and around the eyes are felt. And in this time of unwinding, of becoming effortless. How it's peeling away layers of connection and tension. Little by little, moment by moment. With a relaxed attention. even in the stillness of our bodies lying here in Shavasana. When there is no movement, only pure experiencing. It's here that we find ourselves again, back at home inside this temple of our body. Now becoming attentive to your breathing process, process that's been happening underneath the surface of your turning in, of your withdrawal of senses. The rise and fall of your breath, deep or slow, shallow or long. Whatever is here. And feeling your weight against the earth, the shape of your body over your covers or under your covers, over your support props, the shape of your body wherever you are against the earth. Becoming aware of where your legs are and where your feet are in space. Becoming aware of where your hands are, your arms and their shape. And then find the actual muscle of your heart. And as you breathe, imagine the breath coming from the muscle of your heart, radiating out and down and through your limbs, from the heart to the fingertips, from the heart to the toes. Now from the heart to the crown of the head, like you're a great big star. And if you want, you can even begin to move your body into that star shape, stretching your arms up and out, and your legs 
out to Navi and reaching and become that star on a big inhale to bring you back to this body, into this room, to this beautiful life. You're like your own sun. You are a star in the infinite sky. And as you exhale, you let all those galaxies orbit around, bringing your attention to the center as you roll over onto your right side, pausing there to give thanks again for the light within and the light all around for the many blessings in your life today. And with that gratitude, make your way on up to a seated position. Let your legs just rest in front of you. Cross leg position, Sukhasana. We're sitting back on your heels in Vajrasana like we began today. Bringing the palms together at the center of your chest. Pressing the right palm into the left and the left palm into the right. Sliding your thumbs down to the breastbone. Feeling that pressure there. Connecting right and left hemispheres. Front and back body. Fingertips to heels. Crown of the head to the sitting bones. Inner to outer. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy. May we feel peace and freedom. May we know and live from the light of our true nature. Om shanti shanti shanti. Peace to all, love to all, life to all. Namaste. Thank you for coming this morning, everyone.